Late stage capitalism got you down? Paying for your own mortgage like a schmuck? Why not have somebody else pay it for you? And consider becoming a landlord today. Live on the backs of your tenants like a parasitic leech. I quit my job to become a landlord and now I'm professionally unemployed. Working hard or hardly working? Either way, I'm hard. Side effects of becoming a landlord may include, but are not limited to, migraines, flatulence, generational wealth hoarding, being called Jeff, receding hairlines, and economic collapse. Does a video on Sunday as well. <laughs> Hello sinners, simmers, and slumlords, ladies and landlords, gentlemen and gentrification. Sorry, I'm doing slam poetry right now. I'm a slam lord. The Sims gave us the little Christmas gift of an expansion pack. And much like the Christmas turkey, we have been triple stuffed in 2023. Three expansion packs in one year? I'm full. I've eaten enough. <laughs> but you can also stuff my pockets this Christmas. I am filming this in January using code Steph at checkout on all Sims DLC. Although maybe wait till the end of the video before you decide to live laugh landlord. Before we can even discuss the content of its character, we must first address that the name of this pack is Verbal Diarrhea. The Sims 4 for Ren? It sounds like you're chewing on the word. <laughs> I mean, what's four plus four? Hey, I understand why it's not The Sims for Rent because that sounds like The Sims itself is for rent, which it is not. You still have to buy each pack separately for $40. But was there really not, was there not a better option? Surely we could, let's brainstorm together. I'll start renting together, rental living, discover rent, love to rent. I love it. <laughs> They could have even called it symbiosis because being a landlord is famously like symbiosis in the sense that you live off the backs of other human beings like a leech. Oh, that's not no, no, in the, in the you know sense what I mean? that, like, I'm saying that you know what I mean. But today I will be answering the hard hitting questions like, is this pack worth the money? Didn't we already get apartments? Should I sell my kidney to pay my rent? And do landlords deserve to live? No! Into create a slumlord. Create a sim leans more into the theme of the world. The pieces are mostly everyday basics, which is needed, but there's not any standout pieces really. Best believe I'm not bejeweled. And we know they can do fashion because those $5 clit. $5 clip. Those $5 kits are eating them up right now. I feel like this pack has the opposite problem of what City Living has, where City Living did too much and they all look like capital citizens. This pack did too little. Although hot take, I like the City Living clothes. If they're capital citizens, then District 8. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the items. They're nice, but this is The Sims. I want to have fun. Whatever happened to having fun? I want to wear my full body fish suit to the night market. You're eating fish. I'm eating, comma, fish speaking of fish they didn't forget about the fastest swimmers in this pack for once the kids the toddlers and the infants of course although i might have to rescind the title of fastest swimmers because looks like shark got their toes my only complaint is that these gripper flippers aren't available for adults too my dogs bite <laughs> the sims 4 4 rent has four traits and four aspirations if i have to say four one more time I will forfeit this life. Plus wise, which is a bonus elder trait. The regular new traits include nosy, child of the island, generous and cringe. Something I have often been referred to. If I'm cringe, then you can suck my mint. However, they do stay putting the arse in aspiration. Oh, fuck, we say arse and not ass. I'm not American, I don't say ass and aspiration. <laughs> They're still just gameplay tutorials and there's not even one for being a bad landlord. You've been a very bad, bad landlord. <laughs> I love you. You pay my rent. Into build slash tie, I mean buy. The items are also inspired by Southeast Asia. And they came out swinging with this one. We have windows with stained glass shutters and railings, roof trimmings and decorative roof pieces. A hot tub. We haven't seen a hot tub since the infamous 20th anniversary hot tub gate. Functional water heaters, AC units, radiators, and fuse boxes. I never in my life thought I would be excited about a fuse box, but it's, sure it's really sparked something in me. There's even a full kitchen set with everything but the kitchen sink. Although they did introduce the feature of setting sink type. So now Sims won't wash up their dishes directly next to the shitter. 
Speaking of shitter, we now have a squatting variant. My mother once said that when she was giving birth to me, she had the insatiable urge to squat on the floor. And I believe that was as nature intended. She was in her third trimester. There's also a tuk-tuk, which is obviously just decorative because we're in a never-ending game of tuk-tuk goose with the sims. And the goose is giving us cars, but we just keep going round and round in circles because they won't say goose. Not all of the items are brand new and stunning like me. Some of them are rotted and old like you. I like having crusty musty variants, but where I draw the line is the wall cracks and stains being in the painting slash art category. I am one single piss stain away from going to EA headquarters and smearing fecal matter on the walls. Do you still think it's an art installation? <laughs> Build mode is by no means perfect. I think they missed out on the renting aspect of the pack with the no Let peephole door or sofa bed. Who the fuck who has a four poster bed in their apartment? Show me them, show me quickly and there's also no elevators the only thing going up in this pack is the cost of living but mold is not the only thing of culture in this pack we of course have a new world the world is called tomarang who is tomar and why is he ringing i'm sorry sick living can't come to the phone because she's dead if influencers were to come here their instagram caption would be thailand and tan lines and like the influencers she is stunning but a bit shallow. I will give credit where credit is due. The world does feel busy in some places. The market, for instance, is a major improvement from Hello. the growing together world. That was crickets. This world is only giving crickets in the ambience department. I'm gonna piss. They went off with the sound design. My major problem with this world is the rabbit holes and now tiger holes. Not the tiger's holes, but you know what I mean? More on the tiger sanctuary later, but long story short, they need to pay for their crimes. Sanction for the sanctuary. I know The Sims 3 was heavily reliant on rabbit holes, but that game wasn't also heavily reliant on loading screens. So it literally needed them. Whereas this game has loading screens between every lot and now between every single rental unit. Am I going insane for thinking that we should have active things to do in the, in world? the world? Luckily, you're not restricted to just making apartments in this world. So there is still hope for Dale Sold Out Valley. May she rest. Although this being a beach world does serve as a painful reminder that we can't build on the actual beach lots like the one in Solani. That can't be a residential rental. So if you had beachside resort in mind, have you considered not beachside resort? <laughs> the city living penthouse lots are also on the no-no list, but those old apartments that we have, just in case you forgot, we already have apartment living in the game. You can now edit the windows on that. What a treat. What a treat. I forgot to mention that the builds are actually made by the Sims team. They don't make me want to gouge my eyeballs out, but you could have just asked me. You didn't have to you didn't have to do a fanos and say fine, I'll do it myself. Let's make this year the year you finally asked me to do the builds on a pack. Sims team, stop edging Stefo Sims 2024. <laughs> Of course, the major selling point of this pack is the new rental building system. So I, some have referred to me as a Sim scholar. I have an honorary degree in Simguistics. We'll now be explaining to you how said system works. Rentals essentially allow you to select rooms and assign them as different rental units. The units can be any size. I currently have a spacious one by one outhouse available and you can have up to six units per lot normally, but with cheats, you can have a maximum of 100 with that 100 being per save game. So if for instance, this is just a theory, I would never actually do this. You had a 100 cell for-profit prison, you wouldn't be able to have any other residential rentals in that save game. You can divide that 100 however you like. May I suggest two prisons with 50 units? And I know prisons are already overcrowded, but what if we put the max of eight Sims in each of those 100 units? By my calculations as a Sim scholar, in theory, you could house up to 800 Sims on one single lot. I mean, the 100 baby challenge just got so much more interesting. Now you can house the entire family on one single lot and charge them for it. And they were roommates. In previous Sims apartment iterations, an apartment door has been used as the distinction between different apartments. Now, the problem with that is that every part of the unit had to be connected in some way. So, and th this may be the first time I have ever said this. I can't even get it. The Sims 4 did it better. Oh, what are you talking she's about? Lost it. She's lost Why the would you say that? In the sense that I did once in a feedback meeting with the Sims team, put forward the idea of grouping rooms together in order to make multifunctional lots. And whilst this isn't exactly that idea, you're welcome. Sat I sat down, down with the president, president of Disney Channel, Channel and said, we're going to make history. history. We're going to make history. <laughs> 
today in the Stefo Cinematic Universe, we have Tisha Potatoes and Brittany Bro Sims. And they have moved into the land grab luxury loft together. Except there is absolutely nothing luxe about these apartments. It's a scam. What do you think? It's so crappy in here. But unfortunately, the land grabs own the town. If they see land, they grab. Although the family dynamic has changed a little bit, previous mother of the household, Nancy Landgrab, has been overthrown as supreme evil leader by Jeffree Star and subsequently has been banished to the basement bunker apartment with just a squatty toilet to her name. Real hot girl shit. <laughs> Upon moving into an apartment, you will notice that there are no decorating regulations. You can hang up paintings, paint the walls, delete the walls, delete the door. How is my Open landlord going to door. evict me if he can't even meet me? Much like the mold in the flat, I got bills and they're multiplying. So I got the besties part-time job. Tisha as a fast food worker because she likes to cosplay as Burger King employees and Brittany in their handy person career which is new to this pack and also very inclusive to the handy That's they them. Nice. We also have neighbors, Sims icon Don Lafario above because he can top me and recent divorcee Eliza Pancakes on the bottom. Not because she can bottom me, but rather because she needs a lot for me. There's a few specific interactions between tenants like neighborly chats. Can I pull you for a chat, babe? Other tenants will loiter around the shared spaces, but be warned, if you do engage with them, they will take this as explicit permission to enter your premises. And now I want to sit back and relax and enjoy my evening. When all of a sudden I hear this agitating, grating, Voice. Also, hot tip, if you leave the neighbor's bathroom as a shared space, you will always be able to see it and therefore you can watch them shower. You didn't hear that from me, but also I would drink his shower water. Obviously, Tisha flattened Eliza Pancakes like a pancake, but because it was after 9 p.m., we got a noise violation. A violation for being violated yeah, in my end. own home. Bye. She's the problem. Now, the game doesn't tell you that these fines require immediate action, so I ignored them and assumed Mr. Langrab was obsessed with me when he would stop by every day. Disgusting pervert. I'm just a girl. Instead, we went to the night market because Tish like fish. Trish like fish. Here you can buy fresh fish, local dishes, clothes, and ask the locals to speak American. Especially if you have the cringe trait, you can literally embody the American tourist starter pack. Although I will note that these are very millennial coded memes like Pog Champ and Dabbing. I wouldn't even shit these out of my giat if I was on the skibbity toilet if the Rizzler asked me to do it. I'm Gen Z. Sorry, that was really vulnerable for me to admit. <laughs> Although I will admit it is funny when they dab autonomously. I can't wait to host a funeral. My sim uncontrollably hitting a cold, hard dab on top of a grave. You couldn't write that shit. Anyway, back at the poverty penthouse, we had our first batch of toxic mold. You can either clean it, deploy a mold be gone vaccine bomb. I love women in STEM. Or set it on fire. From the trailer, this did look like they were finally adding arson to The Sims. <laughs> but I think for the game ratings, they legally can't have you commit actual murder. Although it can be self-inflicted, obviously, because if nobody puts you out, you can die from this. Comedy ball. Speaking of comedy, Nosy has to be one of the funniest traits to ever come to The Sims. Whipping out binoculars to see somebody that is so close to you, you can already smell their breath. Hilarious. Asking a Sim to trust you with a secret and then immediately blackmailing them with that exact secret. Incredible talented, never been done before. The secrets are randomly generated, so they don't always make the most sense. But Tisha likes to fish it, so she can dish it. Bitch. You can even post these secrets online like a Gossip Girl blast. Got a secret, can you keep it? No! If you tell me something, there's a matter of seconds before it's in my group chat. <laughs> Unfortunately, our fun was rudely interrupted when Jafar Star turned up at our door serving, not looks, but serving eviction notice for the unpaid fine. Luckily, Tish is that bitch and Jeffrey's a bitch. A little intimidation and he folds like a lawn chair. Eviction rescinded. However, he did increase our rent. And he was already charging an arm and a leg for that. If he wants an arm and a leg, I'm gonna change his name from Jeffree Star to Jeffrey Dahmer. The fines were so large that the joint bank account hit zero. Although pro tip, if you have a fine that's 600, but you only have 200 in the bank, the game only allows you to go to zero. So from my understanding of girl maths, I just saved money by being poor. <laughs> But in desperate times, one might resort to a life of crime. My personal favorite new feature of this pack 
breaking and entering. If you click on the doors, you can now choose to switch between houses. And now there's also eavesdropping and of course breaking. Eavesdropping is another way to find out secrets about Sims, but it's it's a little weird. It's fine when it's a wooden door, but when it's a glass door and you can clearly see you are eavesdropping on no one, it sort of ruins my suspension of disbelief. Love thy neighbor like you love yourself. <laughs> Luckily, Tisha hates herself, so our main hit target was Eliza Pancake, Miss Firecrotch herself. Once you successfully bust down their door, a countdown starts for you to complete all of your devilish tasks in. <laughs> you can snoop, eat their soup, make their apartment look like it was hit by a nuke. Obviously, we could already rob people in the game, but I do wish they removed the three-hour cooldown for stealing. If I want to rob them so blind that they need LASIK... That should be my choice. Tisha did fall asleep on the sofa and get caught, but don't worry, there are almost no consequences for your actions. Which made me question, what exactly do the rental rules cover? I wanted to test the very limits of rental rules. Listen, I support renters' rights, but I also support renters' wrongs. So here is a comprehensive list of all of the things that do and don't break rental rules. For loud noises, talking, playing music, and watching TV will all gain you a fine, but singing into a microphone, talking through a megaphone, and bowling nice car will not for no social events parties and any events will face penalty but club gatherings will not and if you throw a surprise party at your neighbor's house they will get the fine instead of you for no trash overload two dirty sinks will get you a fine but your apartment being so moldy that it's unfit for human yeah. habitation will not nor will your landlord face any prosecution and finally for no pets cats and dogs are sanctioned but fish hamsters rats chickens goats cows llamas and horses are all allowed the horses are allowed in the apartments he is allowed speaking of horse cock there's also <laughs> speaking of horse cock there's also no rules about indecent exposure or antisocial behavior even if you run through the halls with your literal dick and balls out nice car you will not be penalized you will not be penistized and on that note tisha was feeling a little sporadic mostly because she was covered in mold spores so she seduced don with the intention of using his shower and also using him i mean her apartment was all dirty and no talk showering in a clean environment is the only way to get rid of toxic mold full body enema enema chamberlain and as long as you're not exposed to the mold again you're as good as mold tisha wasn't the only thing getting wet we also had a water leak and just as things looked like they couldn't get any worse britney broski succumbed to the mold Shot down in her prime. Broski Nation has fallen. Lower the flags. So like that wasn't my best friend that night. It was the best. They were supposed to grow old together. No! Instead, they just grew mold together. And much like the mold, Jeremiah Starfish is we rotten to the so core. Cut. Upon hearing the news, he immediately banned ghosts. Her body isn't even mold. Her body isn't even cold. Tisha tried decorating the apartment funded by all of her stolen goods, but not even that could raise her spirits. And it certainly can't raise the dead. This flat is still revolting. And so are the tenants to the revolution. Jeffree Star couldn't even leave the makeup lab to make an appearance. In fact, this video was actually the inspiration for his cremated palette. But luckily, Jeff Lee Langrab agreed to our terms. War is over. I had Tisha for a party to celebrate her pay rise, but turns out that pay rise would be her pay demise. Turns out musty, musty muscle man Don Lafario is a Lafari ho. Who could have seen this one coming? Every woman at this party, including icon legend herself, Bella Goff, <laughs> was also his girlfriend. Busted him trying to get a quick bust on the rooftop. Luckily, I foresaw this and put a telescope on the roof for him to play with. And he got hit by a meteor. Because karma is what? My new boyfriend. Unfortunately, parties were against the rules and Tisha had mothered too close to the sun one final time. So you don't have to say to that, bye! Devastating news. They don't accept face card as a valid form of payment and you can't show your rear for rental arrears. So it was truly over. And so she was evicted from the big brother house. <laughs> Jeffrey Star playing the villain. Fork found in the kitchen. Now, when you're evicted, it doesn't let you pack your bags. You can't enter build mode. Your entire flat, including all of your furnishings, every item you've ever stole, your entire collection of tastefully nude self-portraits, your best friend's urn, all repossessed. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm 
pretty sure that's theft. Anyone want to fact check that? Luckily, you can get around this by immediately moving back into the unit. The game lets you move straight back into the property you were just evicted from. So we were able to rescue the ashes. And like a phoenix, Tisha rose from said ashes. I used her remaining funds to buy Tisha's trailer park. How can she afford a property, you may ask? It's free real estate. And so Tisha's game of Simopoly began. You can either move in Sims from the world or press the fill vacancy button. And I am so glad to let you know that these aren't randomly generated Sims. These are pre-made townies made for this pack. For example, Wayne the Boulder. This might be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Although I did unjustly evict him for eating my food and got threats of legal action. So I was stuck between the rock and a hard place. You can also live on your own rental, so Tisha moved into a studio because she doesn't need a living room anymore. Her roommate is dead! As for the other two units, my first choice was Johnny Zest, a strange child of the land grabs. In their metaphorical family tree, he is the branch that they hacksawed off. And you know this is a trailer park, trailers are famously on wheels. So my mind instantly went to Abby Lee Miller. Who do I see at the trailer park? Abby, Abby Lee, Lee Miller, Miller in, in her, her wheelchair. wheelchair. The landlords actually work a lot better when you yourself are not playing as the landlord. The tenants are incredibly high maintenance, probably because I don't do any maintenance, but in my defense, the game doesn't tell you what needs maintaining. And so to have anything above a poor rating, you have to maintain random objects almost daily. I haven't seen my landlord since he handed me the keys. When the electric gate broke, he told me to just jump over it. There's also various catastrophic events that may occur in your properties, like appliances breaking, power outages. You may get a bug infestation. Roaches! Um, yes, hello, pest control. I have 10 ants in my apartment. No, not 10 ants. I have 10 ants. There's also a fun one where a cursed book will appear and you can either mail it away for somebody else to deal with or destroy it, which will leave you cursed for 24 hours. There's also contractors, so you can outsource what little work you have to do as a landlord to other people and just completely freeload off your tenants, like a little parasitic leech. Although saying that this game actually makes being a landlord hard work, Maybe if you had a fucking business that you were passionate about, then you would know what it takes to run a business, but you don't. The rent has a max based on the unit's value and you also have to pay taxes on each unit. And before you ask, no, you cannot commit tax fraud. Believe me, if that existed, I would have done. Not that I know how to commit tax fraud. I just, in the sense that sometimes I think this is a life game and then they do shit like making a landlord not be a lucrative career and adding rent control. Clearly, this is not a game based in reality. Honestly, I have found that you make a lot more money from finding people. <laughs> so I would recommend leaving a metric shit ton of trash on Johnny Zest trailer and then charging him for the cleanup. I mean, he looks pretty zesty. Nobody would really be surprised if his trailer smelt like a Comic-Con and a comic soaked in car. Johnny did threaten to move out due to poor conditions. They have fungus. I have fungal acne. We all have our battles. I'm just trying to make an honest living as a landlord. <laughs> but don't worry if you have a tenant you like and they happen to move out you can just go into managed worlds and force them to live there again against their will like some sort of hostage situation and so i decided to find another way to go from rent to riches i briefly dabbled in trading marbles but then i started thinking about jenna marbles and it's only been three years it's it's too soon. Although I will mention that they had a Belladonna marble, AKA the world from the Sims 2 apartment life. And that made me sweat from a different kind of balls. Balls! My eyeballs. I then turned my attention to the tiger sanctuary. Maybe I could steal a tiger and put it on the black market whilst cosplaying as Carol Baskin. Killed her husband, whacked him. Now imagine my surprise when I discover that there are no tigers for you to see. They should have made it a cheater cage because I feel cheated. You get to watch your sim go in and hear little tiger noises and that's it. For $10, I'll fucking meow for you. Also, while we're on the topic of things that make me want to stick my head in a tiger cage, the child of the village trait is bad. The lanterns we see in the trailer are just an interaction with this trait, so forget Tangled. I'm going to strangle myself. Speaking of, they will wake up and want to toma hang themselves if they do not feel connected to the village, even if they live in the village. Get a grip, get a grip. 
it basically serves to just make them miserable 24 7 for being an uncultured swine if that's the case then oink oink bitch one of the tiger sanctuary's only redeeming qualities is that you can get a tiger inspection badge meaning if you get caught breaking and entering you can whip out the queen card and say i saw a tiger i gotta go check this out and make sure it's safe for you they escape from joe exotic's derelict zoo speaking of derelict i robbed harder than your fave got robbed at the vmas once tisha was through there was nothing left Listen, they robbed her, killed her roommate, made her homeless, called her a slur. It's only fair that she do the same back. Do unto others as you would do to yourself. Or in the poor man's English, don't dish it if you can't tish it. I left a sprinkle of mold with Britney's ghost powers and while snooping in their shelves, she found a secret about embezzlement. Now I know I said these secrets are random, but I just feel in my heart of hearts that this one is true. They are felons and they will rot and subsequently grow mold in jail. And on the way to the throne, the toilet kind, but also metaphorically speaking, the queen kind, she found a secret ladder into the bunker basement. Could this be the physical manifestation of the property ladder? And in prison, Nancy Langrab was her ticket to the top? Nance Lay agreed to join evil forces and do revenge against the Jeffreys. Just two capitalist Barbies against the world. They started by diversifying their property portfolio, starting with the castle build from my 100 Days in the Sims video, aptly renamed to Tishtown and Tish's Tavern, the Brittany Bro Ski Lodge in her honor, and most iconic of all, the Malibu Moses Motel, painstakingly crafted by me and inspired by the Trixie Motel. Check-in desk and a communal kitchen slash boba stand. So you can gobble on some balls after you finish gobbling on some- Although this is for all intents and purposes a woohoo motel, it is still a classy establishment. So there will be no mold. This is a motel, not a mold tell. It will, however, still shine bright under a blue light. Now, if you set the lease length to one day, the residential rentals can essentially function as hotels. There's a couple new events in this pack, including the potluck and the pool party. No idea why pool party is exclusive to this pack, but I decided to throw one anyway for opening night, seeing as we had the stunning swimmers pool come support my local business. The opening night was a smashing success. Tisha even opened her legs in solidarity and cleared the entire premises with her performance. <laughs> All but one guest, Malcolm Langrab, heir to the Langrab estate, found dead in the penis pool. He was scrubbing off mold spores he acquired from his rotting palace and suddenly the penis pool was surrounded by penis walls like some kind of giant penis pool condom. A tragic accident. There were so many dogs out at the pool event that I think it triggered the neighborhood adoption event. Woof. This basically spawns in a bunch of homeless dogs. They arrived at the bins like little dumpster dogs. I think I accidentally manifested this because I put the motel unit traits as breeding ground, thinking this was the trait that helped Sims get pregnant. That one is in fact for pets. Breeders, what are you gonna tell me next? The pussy slayer trait is for cat euthanasia? Come on now. That's not a real trait, but um, speaking of slaying, Jeffrey Langrab didn't have much luck at the potluck. You're eating my face! Gotta get out of the room. Gotta get out of the room. Slain yeah. by a cow plant. Arguably the lesser of two evil Jeffreys, but I had bigger plans for Jeffree Star. Bigger plans to take down Big Langrab once and for all. I mean, he was already on the brink of financial ruin. Tish's original apartment? Set for foreclosure. New name just dropped. Sims 4 foreclosure. <laughs> and so as her final act of revenge, she swooped in and bought the tower as an anonymous buyer. You're looking at the new improved Tish Towers. Also, this is probably the worst thing I will ever admit to on the internet, but I occasionally act, I have the Freudian slip of saying tilted towers when I in fact mean the twin tower. <laughs> the second tilted towers has been hit. And that was a wrap on Jeffree Star. We alerted the police about the basement lease and he was arrested for embezzlement and human imprisonment. Nan Slay testified against him at the police station. When called to the stand, she land dragged his name through the mud. He'll spend the rest of his life behind bars. He will, he never, will never be, be Jeffrey, Jeffrey again. again. Also, Abby Lee Miller is now his cellmate. Abby's in jail for tax fraud. And Tisha owns the prison. Paytas Penitentiary. Now, did Tisha become everything she hated in the world? Yes. Listen, I'm a firm believer in eat the rich, but sometimes the rich eat too. She's a CEO. She swallowed the land grabs whole as if they were a mook bomb. And together, Tisha and Nancy reclaimed the mansion like two aliens returning to the mother sh
into the review of The Sims 4 City Living Part 2, it's not lost on me how insane it is that we now have two expansion packs where one of the main features is apartments, but... Well, there is no map. We've never seen anything be reused in a pack to this extent. City Living's apartments arguably did need to be redone, but should that have been done in a pack refresh, for example, instead of a full new expansion pack? I also wish the system allowed you to zone rooms as different lot types. I mean, you kind of can. You could put a bar in the shared space and hire an NPC, but then you might also need to put an AA meeting across the hall too. I am really glad that the game lets you play as being a bad landlord. I think The Sims gets scared to add bad things to the game because it's scared of coming across as supporting that, which uh, by the by the sounds of this pack, The Sims supports mold. The Sims is big mold. <laughs> Although I will say the game is quite swayed to being a good landlord. It's so heavily encouraged that it's very difficult to make any real money unless you have good amenities, space and decor, which is not accurate in this economy at all. I'm currently renting out my cupboard under the stairs to a small malnourished boy with a scar and I'm charging him 11 grand a month. The biggest flop of this pack for me is the loading screens between units. I see The Sims 4's loading screen more than I see my family. But even with saying all that, for the core mechanic of being able to make residential rentals, I will use this pack every time I play The Sims. Unlike horses. We went from nay to neighbors. <laughs> I always think that expansion packs are overpriced for what they are, but to answer the question, address the horse in the room, would I personally buy this pack? Yes, live, laugh, landlord. But anyway, that is the end of the video. Happy 2024. I really could not catch a break last year. I had so many medical problems. Just to give you some context as to why there wasn't many videos last year, I had something called labyrinthitis, which for anyone that doesn't know, the inner ear controls all of your balance. And because they didn't figure out that I had a inner ear infection, Mine just got, my balance nerve got fried. <laughs> Luckily, my brain has been able to somewhat compensate and adjust, but I still get moments where I can't even walk in a straight line <laughs> and I need to be under a blanket in full sensory deprivation so that my brain isn't doing backflips. And pretty much the second I recovered from that, I lost my granddad. Um, he had dementia, but it's never... As much as you can anticipate it, it's something that you could never fully prepare for. So I'm planning to do some charity work this year. Usually I'm not very comfortable with being vulnerable on the internet. I've always wanted to be more of a distraction for people, but I've decided to let go of that year because I am a human being and not a simulated AI generated meme bot. <laughs> so I thought just talking about it online and not treating my feelings as if they're a burden to the people that watch me would probably be a good step in the right direction. <laughs> but thank you for sticking around for that whole year. And if you're still here at the end of this video, a big fat thank you to my Patreons for supporting me. And I will see you hopefully not in two months time. That would be nice. My little freeloader, you owe me so much rent.